Steps in Building a Good Program. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you this is more of an art than it is a science. <laughs> and that kind of contradicts everything we've talked about already. And we talked a little bit about you know, this previously, but the basic idea is that figuring out what technique to use in what situation for a behavior manager is a shaping process. So it's going to take you a while to figure out what to do and what's your go-to um, sort of thing when you've got an escape behavior or when you've got a, a back-talking behavior, you know, those types of things. It depends on how it's maintained. It's going to take a while to figure out what to do. And some people are just great at this right off the bat. Okay? Uh, some people are excellent. And they can just say, hey, uh, this is the behavior that's happening. I think i got a great technique to use. Let's try this. Bum, 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 bum. And, then all, and then everything works and they're reinforced for it. Other people are going to have to struggle a little more, make some failures, and before they start to have their successes. Let's say you're done with the program. You better ask the question, did it work? <laughs> okay. And how do you know? In other words, capture data. All right. Uh, record follow-up data. You know, come back in three months. See if it maintained. Uh, call the teacher. Call the parent. Hey, you having a problem with that behavior anymore? Has it been completely under control? And the parent might say something like, "Well, you know what? It happens every now and again, but man, it's been really, really effective." Okay, cool. Move on. All right. Or maybe you call the parent and they say, "You know, this kid just has been out of line. It, it didn't work at all. I hate this thing." So, okay, well, why don't I get back in there and do a little bit more recording, and I'll see if I can help you out a little bit. And you actually go and do some recording and you maybe do another baseline, so to speak. This, we're really thinking about maintenance here, so it wouldn't be a baseline. But you're just going back and recording and seeing how often that behavior is occurring. Now compare that to the original baseline and maybe it actually did work and the parents just, you know, again, focused on the wrong thing, not focused on successes. Okay. What are you going to do if it didn't work? Did the behavior fail or did the behavior change plan fail? If so, you're probably going to implement something new. Again, if it did work, plan for follow-ups. Okay? Um, if, it, if it didn't work, uh, then you're going to go back and try new techniques. And you're going to keep hammering at this until you get the behavior under control. Okay. Cost-benefit analysis. What are you going to get out of it? What, what's the client going to get out of it? What are the people in the environment going to get out of it? Does it benefit folks? Does it not? Right? Um, is this going to cost more than it's worth? Right? Maybe the kid's just escaping some math tasks once in a while. Once in a while. Well, you know, is it worth it to pay you $100 an hour or whatever your rate's going to be to get in there and fix the problem? Or is this something that can be dealt with in a different way? So, so not just in terms of dollars, but you know, the, the work that's going to be involved for everybody, the changes that are going to happen to the classroom, the changes that are going to have to happen at home. Is it going to work out? Okay. If you are successful, you need to tell people about it. This is what journals are for. This is what, you know, you write up your results. You, uh, you, you talk about these plans at conferences. You uh, go to professional meetings and you interact with folks and say, here's what I've done in this situation because you owe it to the scientific community to share your successes with them. The idea is this is database decision making. This is science. It's going to build on itself. You're using other people's research to come up with your stuff. Right. Well, to your interventions and your programs, then you have to contribute back to that. You ethically owe it to the body of people that are doing this work to give back. Right. This is a much like the open source world. Okay, you open source, free software, right? You go and you get the software, but you owe it to the community to give back somehow. Maybe that's just some software testing. Maybe that's um, Maybe that's contributing a little bit, you know, financially to the to the software development team. Who knows? But the idea is the same thing here. If you are going to use everybody's procedures, and you you're using procedures that have been around for 50 years now, so that's 50 years worth of work. If you're going to jump right in and grab those techniques, you owe it to give back. And the easiest way to give back is share your successes. Uh, and you know what? This doesn't necessarily have to be just at a professional meeting. Maybe it can be with family members. Maybe it can be with uh, uh, friends. And you say, hey, this is how I solved this problem. You're sharing it. You're passing it on. You're, you're generating your research and, you, and you're giving that information back to everyone that needs it. All right. That's that. See you soon.